Judd creating well play to Yaron. Now kick the goal, Yaron. Side steps, gets himself into a pickle, still got it, and goes bang. And did they need it? Very good early. Well, that's not a good kick, but Yaron. Oh, oh, it right. was a magnificent mark. He came from the just the wrong spot. Oh, he's through here again, Yaron. Yaron got a lot of space in front. Let's have a look at the foot race. He says to Selwood, I'll take you on, mate. Three bounces. Armfield for this up with this chip and did really well. And Yaron was hard forward. Oh, well done by Yaron. Worked in front of a taller man and breaks away. Another right. hand pass. Pick it up. Pick it up, Cramery. Eventually he does, but he's in trouble. He's been winning hard. Handball inside was terrific. Yaron, Yaron, Yaron. Still Yaron. Cheeky little bounce. Oh, well done. Runs towards goal. It's a chance. It's <laughs> as good as you'll ever see. This was me at the height of my career, on top of the world. But underneath that was a darkness lurking that I tried to cover through my footy and my success. But eventually, the darkness took over. I want to take you back to where it all started. I grew up in WA, never really having a stable home. I remember at the age of nine, my father was incarcerated for 18 years. Mum did her best, trying to look after five kids as we moved around from school to school, town to town. I was always struggling to make new friends. The reason we moved was because of violence. We didn't feel safe. It wasn't unusual to have fights every weekend and to be involved in them. Some of the memories that I'll never forget is seeing my own mother being beaten in front of me. Football was my escape. Midvale Footy Club was where I found somewhere where I belonged. Football was something I couldn't get respect through. I grew up resenting my surroundings and I was prepared to do anything to get out. Football was my ticket. It worked for seven years. I reached the pinnacle I had gone from a kid having nothing to being on top of the world. I had it all, but it only was treating the symptoms. And by the eighth year, that was when my life started to fall apart. I was introduced to methamphetamines by a family member. Drugs were something I had despised my whole life. And I remember, as I was about to try ice, I said to myself, this will either be just a good night or it would ruin me. It ruined me. It destroyed my relationship, my career, my finances, my health, physically and mentally. Physically, I went from a fit, healthy athlete to a slob. I stacked on the weight. That's when I started to miss training because I didn't want to be seen in the messed up state I was in. I would be awake for days and that started to take a toll. I remember sitting in my bathroom for hours smoking meth, isolating myself from everyone and that's when my mind would take over. Once I didn't get a kick out of smoking, that's when I started injecting it. I tried every avenue of help that the professionals recommended. I tried counselling, psychiatrist, rehab. I spent four weeks in rehab for 1,000 a night. And the day I walked out, I was back on meth. This ended my footy career and I moved back home to Perth. I remember meeting Pastor Steve and knowing he was a pastor I remember avoiding him as much as I could. I remember feeling so down about myself. Then I realised I'd hit rock bottom. I realised that I was the person who had everything and I'd lost it all. It was the 20th of Feb, 2017. Pastor Steve dropped around and invited me to a special series of meetings at the church. I made a decision that morning that I had tried every human resource, the best, the world had to offer. I needed something supernatural. I had grown up knowing God was real, but I never knew who God was. That day I came to church, I remember going down the front and praying a prayer of repentance.
from my sins and I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. I met God. I remember feeling like a new person. For so long I had tried to overcome the darkness inside of me, but the moment I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Saviour, everything changed. The darkness was gone, replaced with a light that gives me joy and peace that I had searched for in career and in drugs. I no longer had a desire for drugs, drink, gambling and partying. It was like I was made an entirely new person from the inside out. I was born again. If you're watching this, maybe you can understand some of my experiences. You don't have to live a life in depression and hopelessness. There is hope. You don't have to go through this alone because Jesus Christ loves you. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, for God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. If you will surrender your life to Jesus Christ, I am 110% certain that he can change you like he changed me.